Let's now have a look on the dual WAN setup in PFSense. It is easy to set up, but you need to have a, an idea of what you're doing. And I was not familiar with this device, so I made a few mistakes. And also how to configure an incoming service. So, first of all here we go to system. Actually, we go to interfaces and we set the interfaces up. So, my original one interface was here, and that's where I configured my DSL line. So we need to have it configured here on DHCP, that's the case, but you're going to use whatever you need, right? Depending on what your provider is giving you. And basically the rest of it is going to depend on your connection, but have it working, yeah? Then configure the second interface, in my case is this AWN here. My provider gives me static IPv4, so that's the configuration. Once you have it done, you have to make sure that the gateways are set. Then you go to system, you go to routing, and each one of your, one of your you know, internet interface is going to have its, its own gateway. Do the configure the config as it pleases. I prefer not to use my own provider as a gateway because just because I can ping my provider's concentrator or something doesn't mean that I can actually do anything. So I use Google DNS for one and for the other one I use uh, uh, Open DNS, right? Then the next step here is to create a gateway group. But actually before you go there, once you have the, the gateways for each connection configured, you can go to diagnostics. You can try a ping, for example. Then you can ping google.com, for example, using the source address of your providers. In my case, DSL and AWN, but in your case, it will be probably WAN 1 and WAN 2. Once you test the two interfaces individually and they are resolving a name, you are pretty much good to go. If you don't resolve the name, make sure that you have the DNS configuration set in general setup. In my case, my DLS provider gives me a DNS, but my other provider doesn't. I just would rather use an external provider here. All right, then what do you do? In routing, you go to gateway groups, right? And when you create a new gateway, make sure that they are all on the same tier, right? Because if you do this, it's gonna be a failover setup. And you can set up different priorities. So for example, if you have multiple providers, like you could have a 3G router here that you would set as tier two that would be active only, you know, when you use it, right? Then when you go back to routing, your new gateway group is going to be one of the options available as default gateway. Then make sure you pick it up, otherwise, you know, the traffic is going to still always be using a single interface. And that's it for browsing the internet. Now, for example, I host a server, right? Then when you create a net rule for your internal server, and unfortunately my provider only gives me IPv4, one of them, so I'm not gonna do IPv6 if not all of them will give me you know, IPv6 properly. When you create a rule, you need to make sure to create one for each interface. When you go here, The help says that the pass option doesn't work. I don't want to save this. The pass option doesn't work when you have multiple internet links. So you have to create really one per port or per service and per interface. So in the case I have one for DSL, HTTPS to my internal server. Yeah. So destination port range is the service that you are providing and the uh, target IP in the port is where you are hosting the server, yeah. If you're gonna access this uh, service from inside your network, 
you may want to set up net reflection. Otherwise, when you try to open use the F, using the FQD end of your service, it's gonna fail, right? Um, in my case here, I don't have in my name server, and actually I am now only using PFSense and my setup is much easier than before. I don't need to run a separate DNS server anymore. When you set this up, uh, the router is gonna translate the address in a way that uh, you can basically browse the service that we're providing, even though that name that you have it's not registered. That's why it's a reflection, right? Your connection goes, resolves the external IP, but it's inside your network. So the router has the intelligence to reassign the traffic. And my previous route, I couldn't do that. So I had to create uh, an entry in the host file, otherwise I couldn't access my, lo my local service. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So once you have it set, you are going to be able to normally leverage both connections and it really works. So if you go for example to status here in the traffic graph, if we open a speed test, You're gonna see that I'm getting more than one interface. So C48 max, I get a hundred, and if you go to LAN, you get you know the traffic to get us summed. Anyway, so that's it. My router is finally virtual. I may install a physical box at some point so I can operate my NAS more properly and not have to worry about upgrade updates, but for now saving money is a priority, so I'm going to leave you with this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.